Well, it's good to have you here. Uh, this is the first of a few of uh, interviews, hopefully a lot of them, that I'm going to try to do with interesting people. But I meet the wrong one. One of those very interesting people is Håkan Rude. My old professor here, he's not that old, but he's still my old professor here at the International Institute of Industrial Environmental Economics at Lund University. Håkan is a professor in preventative environmental strategy. He's been in this uh, field for more than two decades. So let's hear what he has to say. He's been teaching 900 alumni from 110 countries. Is that right? Mm, that's correct. Yeah, that's a lot of alumni. Yeah. No, that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. It it's an amazing thing. So, uh, well, maybe the, the obvious uh, question, what's happened over these two and a half decades? Are there any clear things that you have seen from all these countries? Is there anything you can point to? It's, it's kind of, of, of course, a big, uh, big movement, you know, and I mean, obviously, when I look upon it, I, I see kind of a lot of individuals coming yeah. here, leaving their home countries with big aspirations and then moving over here and immersing in a, an international environment here. Um, I mean, from a teacher's perspective, the big shifts lie around the, the like, you know, the knowledge base being totally different these days. 25 years ago, we had a lot of people who just didn't know so very much about basic stuff, about the natural science, about things, um, what is climate issues, what are what's ozone depletion, etc. And nowadays, kids come in here and they you know, they know so much. They know it all. Uh, huh. I mean, so kind of it's it's much more about. Um, of course, it's always uneven, and that's our challenge a bit here to mm. give a. But knowledge levels are up regarding environmental issues there among totally, the students. Totally, totally. It's a different ball game. Yeah, it is. Hmm. Of course, kind of since we bring in the world here, yeah, uh, the different there are big differences. Yeah. So kind of, yeah. It's not but crazy. since you bring in the world, and you get there, I would uh, maybe both opinions and a little bit the knowledge level that they're at in their home countries. Are you an optimist or a pessimist with regards to these environmental? Things? I think, uh, no, clearly, I'm clearly, I've always been a very, very optimistic person, and I, I am basically an optimist. Uh, I, on one hand, you can see I, I submerge in, a, in a, an environment with a lot of very positive people who want mm. to do change, you know, and seeing that and trying to enforce that and help these people move on with their careers and do, go out and do good, of course you become an optimist. Yeah. Too. That's optimistic in itself. Yeah, it is. But if you look at the world, if mm -hmm. you look at the state of, you know, wastewater treatment, renewable energy or not, transportation in different places. No, but I think I think kind of you know you could. Uh, I mean, the problem comes when still on the on the really massive scale of things, you know, and, and of course climate change is the big thing now, and uh, it's clear now that suddenly it's coming quicker than one would have expected. Yeah. It's so it's surprising also the climate scientists. My dad works in this space, and now also he's surprised. Yeah. So, so that's hitting a bit hard. And when you see a keeling curve, you know this curve with uh, at Hawaii with the CO two levels that uh, yeah. has these yearly oscillations, and, and then you see that it's kind of constant. It's just moving up, 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 up. And you know all the efforts that are done in society, all the industries doing things, uh, countries, individuals trying to save, trying to reduce impact, and uh, and yet. Yet it keeps moving up. I mean, you don't see anything in this goddamn curve. It's kind of just moving up. So that's a bit disturbing. Mm -hmm. That's when you kind of, hey, wait a minute, should I really be an optimist? You know, mm -hmm. when you see that, um, I, I think that that is it's a bit troubling actually. I feel the same thing. I see a lot of developments going in the right direction with prices going down. You know, solar batteries. Yeah, yeah. a lot it's, of things going, but at the same impressive. time. It has hardly made a dent in the, in the nature we live in, so yeah. it's a bit uh, frustrating as well. Mm. But maybe we're at the point where a lot of things could be happening in the coming years. I think so. Actually, mm. I, I really think so. Yeah. I think we. I think you can sense this in in our societies that mm. you know things are bubbling in different ways, and I think we're somehow up for some sort of perfect storm here with yeah. a number of things becoming cheap enough uh, and. Mm. Uh, I mean, you can, of course, look upon this, and if, if you look upon big changes, I mean, 15, 20 years ago, renewable energy was still something a bit esoteric. It's kind of, you 
yeah something small it yeah. was very pricey hey come on what do we what yeah. do we get this from and nowadays this is kind of a mainstream thing it's it's the cheapest thing in any options uh, yeah. situation so so kind of it's clear that kind of wait a minute this has been a transformation in our paradigm suddenly we have that kind of energy mm. and yet on the other hand then we're moving on and realizing that hey wait a minute hmm, that won't be the soul of it god damn it um still we have to do it but yeah. uh, you know uh, but it's not the magic pill maybe that we were hoping for when it started growing s- some hope for that but i mean mm. it's clear that kind of if you move a lot of energy and we feel we then we have a cheaper and renewable energy yeah also renewable energy will have an environmental cost and more importantly kind of renewable all sorts of energy will move around a lot of material so yeah you know. yeah and some of it will be part of some sort of renewable energy revolution with uh, batteries and other methods for wind energy or whatever it is, but uh, when you have energy, then you move yourself, you buy stuff, you produce stuff, yeah. and so on. So yeah. And then uh, that stuff, hey, God damn it, that's comes with an environmental burden, right? That's maybe the real problem, huh? <laughs> mm. Mm. So, um, mm, it is uh, still very much a challenge there. Yeah, it, yeah. It, the challenge is getting more and more complex. But to get back to the point there about change, uh, it's uh, I think it's very clear that in, in many dimensions, you have a technical dimension, you have uh, some sort of economic frustration in the system that we can't really move, uh, keep it on, and then yeah. we have some sort of frustration among individuals. And mm. You can see that people are sort of refusing to fly, refusing yeah. to eat meat, uh, they're skipping school and protesting. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. Call, call it. So suddenly you're seeing things that, you know, all these things put together, mm. mm-hmm. Yeah, some some curves are apart from the killing curve. Some curves are going in the right direction. Yeah. If we if we think about the the meat consumption that has actually kept going down now for uh, two or three years, uh, uh, dairy consumption is actually uh, going down, and uh, the plant based alternatives are going up. Yeah. So there are some trends pointing in the right direction. I think there are many trends. In mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. There are many. I mean, if you, I think, for the individual who wants to live a life less kind of. Uh, environmentally demanding it's much more feasible these days mm. there are more alternatives available there are clearly 